welcome to the dining room and the formal dining table. I'm going to show you in the next few minutes how to handle yourself at this table so you're confident, you're authoritative, you know your role, and not just your bread roll, but also <laughs> the fork and knife and understanding you know, wh how we eat and so that you can carry on great conversation with your guests. Because really it's all about how you make people feel at the table. And uh, do remember, you're gonna be talking to people on your left and your right. It's not just one-on-one. -on -one. You wanna make conversation so that you can include most of the people at the table. But first, you have to take your seat. And to take your seat, you take it, you pull out the seat, you enter on your left left side, the chair's right, and it could be squeaky. Go ahead and sit down. You take the chair and you pull it underneath you. Lift up and just pull it underneath you. There you go, excellent, perfect. Now was that so hard? That was the hardest part. That's the hardest part about dining etiquette. There's a few things I want you to know. So when you sit down, have you ever stolen anyone's roll? <laughs> or maybe someone took your roll off of your bread plate? It's happened, it happens. Because sometimes the place settings are so tight, you're not sure, is that my bread plate or is this my bread plate? Is this my glassware? So simple way to learn this, BMW. I know we all know what a BMW is. B is for bread, M is for meal, and W is for water. So when you sit down, just go BMW, and then you'll know what's yours. Solids are always on the left, and, and the beverages and liquids are always on the right. Very simple. Now, when you're eating, we also eat from the outside in. So if you look at your place setting, you can see what type of courses we're going to have. You see a soup spoon. You see two knives, your dinner knife and um, your dinner fork, and you also have a salad fork and salad knife. This up here, does anyone know what these, the fork and spoon up here are for? Dessert. Exactly, my favorite part. <laughs> In a formal dining situation, there's courses. So your first course would be the soup course. You hold your soup spoon like a pencil. So if you want to take it so, so that you feel comfortable with it, you hold your soup spoon like a pencil. Just like if you were writing a note, but your thumb is upward. Exactly. And you do spoon away from you. You've heard this, you know, spoon away. And the reason for that is, is that you don't want to splash any of the soup on your clothing or on your blouse or et cetera. So you want to spoon away and we uh, sip from the side. We're not going to go <laughs> You don't want to see any cooling, okay? You know, you want to just spoon away and, and you don't go down to the soup plate. You know, you bring your spoon to you. You want to lean forward. You want to make sure that you're situated just like Kaylin's doing right now. Great, great posture. Looks good at the table. Plus, she's seated up close enough to the table where she, it will prevent that spilling on her clothing. So you spoon away and take a sip. Perfect. Soup was great. Didn't you like that? Delicious. Now it's going to get a little tricky. Um, fork and knife. This is the, the very important part of fork and knife, and it's very simple. You hold the fork and knife in your hands and you put your fingers and your thumb around the handle of the fork and knife. And your forefinger is on the back of the knife and the fork. And did you know there's two styles of eating? Oh, it's like you're trying to figure out one. Now you have two. You have American style, which we traditionally do here in the United States. And, and then the continental style, which is more, is, people think of it as European. Have you ever seen those people eat with a fork and knife? And then they, they keep the knife in their hand and take the fork to their mouth upside down. And you're thinking, what are they doing? Well, it's just another style of eating. And actually, it's growing in the United States. It's a more efficient way to eat. And I'd like to challenge you today to do that. It gives you that appearance of being more world traveled and just to understand a different style. Pierce it, pierce the food and use your knife as a pusher to push it right onto the tines and then take it to your mouth, keeping the knife in your hand. I felt as though Pamela was taking us under her wing and she cared for us enough to show us things that no one had taken the time to show me before. So I was definitely like a sponge. I wanted anything that she had to offer me, I definitely wanted to know about it. I wanted to be able to apply it to my own life. I know obviously she's somebody that I could probably
probably really, really look up to. Rest position for Continental Style looks like an inverted V, like this. That lets the wait staff know that you're resting. After you're finished eating and you want to go into the, the finished position, it looks like this in Continental Style, just like this. The fork and knife are together keeping the handles out just a little bit on your plate. Perfect, yes. Every time, you know, she would start talking about, all right, this is how you, you know, you butter the bread, and this is this, this is how it's set up. It was just, it was awesome, it was exciting, because I never learned anything like that, because I never um, done, a, like, a fine dining experience. So, it was just, um, it was nice, I liked it. Now there's one thing I did not tell you that no one asked about was your napkins. No one mentioned that. I wanted to see if anyone would take the napkin. Well, let me tell you, she is sitting, Kaylin is sitting in the host position. So she is in charge of the table. To her right, traditionally, is her guest of honor. How about that? That's special. <laughs> so when you have a host at a table, you follow the host's lead. It's very important that you do this because you don't know if she's going to make a toast in honor of her guest. Uh, you need to watch and follow suit with her. So in, if you came and sat down, you would be watching her. She'll make conversation, and then she would take her napkin. So Kaylin, what you would do is just remove the um, napkin ring. Oh, this one's a tight one and just set it to the side of the table and then you unfold your napkin so the crease of the napkin up against your waist. Mm -hmm. That's right. You have had some experience in this. I love it. And that's exactly what Kaylin's saying. You put it halfway. A dinner napkin is folded in half with the fold up against your waist. When you excuse yourself, like if you were in dinner and you wanted to excuse yourself and use the restroom, you would take your napkin and put it in the seat of your chair. That lets the wait staff know that you're returning. And then when you're finished, in the end of the evening, you would place your napkin to the left of your place setting. Never in the gravy. <laughs> Never put it right in the middle. One more thing I want to tell you, it's very important. When you're formally dining, you don't make butter sandwiches. You know what I'm talking about? That's where you take a piece of a roll, and you open it up, you cut it open, you slap all that butter on, you close it, and you eat it like a, a sandwich. We don't make butter sandwiches. No, actually, you take one bite at a time. You take, a, you tear off a piece of your roll above the plate, because that's what a bread plate's for, is to capture the crumbs for you. You butter just that one piece, put your butter spreader down, and eat the one piece. So how about that? Do you think you can do it? I think so. You look pretty confident sitting here at the table. What if we had food? Mm. Well, you be better, it? It? Yeah. <laughs> would be one of my best friends. Oh, really? Is that right? I think it would be a pity to have Pamela go to all this trouble to teach us and not actually be able to try it. So I want all of you to go upstairs, get dressed, get all gussied up, and we are taking you to a five-star restaurant. You're going to come down. The limousine that we saw with Pamela will be waiting for us outside. You're with me. We're going to have dinner. How about that, Kayla? You ready? Let's go. itself was such a treat and I just kept on thinking I can't believe I'm doing this <laughs> the limo ride was awesome we it was a really good chance to get to know each other and and talk about you know dining and and food and most of us haven't ever had that kind of a dining experience so we were really curious and wondering what it would be like five-star restaurant well, yeah, but I mean, apparently we're headed to St. Augustine. Yeah. Are we?
whole time I was like, where are we going? Where, what kind of restaurant are we going to? You know, who's going to be there? And it was just, um, it was exciting because it was like we all got to dress up and, and you know, go do, like, actually we're going to go out and get to, you know, act like, you know, we're prim and proper and we know everything. So <laughs> it was fun. The next Real Girls, Real Life. The hotel was absolutely stunning and fabulous. So ladies, we're here at the 95 Cordova. It's an incredible five diamond restaurant. The meal was fabulous. That has been the highlight. <laughs> Have any of you ever had a situation where um, maybe you didn't necessarily make the best first impression? I never thought I was going to be okay. I never thought I was going to be normal or happy again. 